Kia ora year 12 and 13, this is the second video I'm making on practice assessment A and in this one I'm going to go slowly through how to solve a trig equation and then how to do general solutions and particular solutions. Um, just bear with me while I plug in the microphone, hopefully that sounds a bit better. And I'm just going to look at one part of the question to keep the video reasonably short. I am going to go pretty slowly, so um, if you're understanding this well already, the best thing to do is to pause the video here and have a go at the question and then play it back, maybe play it back on double speed. So this video is just going to look at this, this one here. Um, I'm going to save this one for tomorrow night. Right, so John also believes that the following equations are true always. This follows on from the first one where we proved that the equations were true always. We did that using the features of the graph and using an identity. So here we have to say whether John is right or not, and it, it turns out that he's not, he's wrong. Um, but what we've got is a situation where sometimes this is a true statement. So how can I think about that? Well, graphically, let's have a look at what we've got. Well, on the left-hand side, we've got a wave, right? This is a cosine function, and yep, it's got one added to it, so it's been shifted up, but it's still going to be a cosine function, just a cosine function that's been transformed. On the right-hand side, we've got the function y equals root 3. So that's just a horizontal line. So those two things can't always be the same. Right? So they're not always the same. But maybe sometimes they're the same. And that's what we mean by solving an equation. So they're not always the same. So when are they the same? Well, when are they equal? Let's see, well we've got root 2 cos of 2x plus pi on 4 plus 1 is equal to root 3. Now you can chuck that into your calculator and get an idea for what the functions look like. And I've done that in GeoGebra here. So here we go, this is what we're trying to find. Um, first we're going to find the general solution. That gives me a formula for all of the points going on forever in both directions that make this a true statement. And then we have to find particular values between negative pi and pi, which is negative 3.14 and 3.14. Now I can't remember here if we said less than or equal to or strictly less than. Um, so just check that. We do have to be careful with this because sometimes we'll have to look at whether the end points are particular solutions. In this case, it turns out not to matter. So you can see by looking that what we want to find for our particular solutions are these four values. And it's fine to check them on the calculator, but we're going to get there with some algebra, as usual. So let's go ahead and solve this. I'm going to do general solutions first, then I'm going to substitute and get the particular solutions. So we have root 2 cos of 2x plus pi on 4 is equal to root 3 minus 1. So we're trying to get back to cos of something, and we're just about there. Now, don't freak out and think that you've got to do some special triangle thing on this. You don't. You just need to get it as a decimal. And that works out to be roughly 0.517638 dot dot dot. Now what we're going to look for first is the principal value for this equation. So alpha is the principal value of this. So what do I mean by this? Well, what angle, alpha is an angle, right? This is the angle whose cosine is this number here. So when we chuck that into our calculators, we get alpha is equal to 1.026708, and I'm working in radians. Now, to get the general solution, we're sticking with what I've got here. Now, that should be pi on 4, not pi on 3. So now we say, well, 2x plus pi on 4 is going to come from 2n pi, plus or minus this number here. Right, now I've done a separate video on general solutions. It's pretty old and clunky, but I think it probably still works. But here's the basic idea 
for a cosine curve. So there's your cosine curve. And suppose we want to find all of the points that are solutions to that equation. Well, I'm going to pick them off using this formula. And the reason it works is because of the symmetry of the cosine function. So here is 2 pi, here's 0 pi, and so on. And you can see that if I go forwards, I need a different color pen, out that way, I'll hit that one. And if I go back that way, I'll hit that one. Same thing here. 0 pi, I go forwards that way, and I go backwards that way. So that's why in my general solutions formula, for cosine, I've got 2 n pi, because that's making me go and pull out all of the even-numbered multiples of pi. Okay, but you don't need to think about that once you've got the hang of it. You just need to do that a few times when you're starting out. So we'll get rid of that. Now we pretty mechanically go through and solve this equation. The first thing I notice is I've got this pi on 4 here. So I'm going to go 2x is equal to 2 n pi minus pi on 4 plus or minus 1.026708. Now notice that I have put this pi on 4 over here, nowhere near this thing, because the easiest mistake to make is to, to I'm going to do this thing, cross it out. Right, if I write it like this, this is correct, but it's going to lead me often to make mistakes. Because here, I, I need to add and subtract. And if I group those together, I'm going to go badly wrong. So when I'm doing general solutions, and when I'm teaching general solutions, I always teach people to put the subtracted thing right next to the 2n pi. Um, I've got 2x now, but I want to find x. So my general solution for x is x equals... I'm going to do this really slowly. Each term gets divided through by 2. So pi on 4 becomes pi on 8, plus or minus, and this number works out to be 0 0.513354. So that is just about my answer for general solutions, but the 2n on 2 here looks really ugly. So we're going to fix that up. We get x is equal to n pi minus pi on 8, plus or minus 0.513354. So that's the general solution, the values that will make that equation way back at the start true. Okay, so John believes that the following equations are true always, and we found out that John was not right, and now we've found the general solution. Now the next thing we've got to do is give the specific solutions for this range. So this is pretty easy, but it's also pretty tedious. What I have to do is take my general solution and chuck in values of n and figure out the values. And then I'm looking to see whether they're between negative 3.14 and positive 3.14. So when I do this, I always start with n equals 0. And I've got two cases. So the first one is x is equal to uh, 0 pi. So it's going to be 0 minus pi on 8 plus the big long number. All right, that gives me 0 0.1206549. Right, and then I do the next one for n equals 0 is the one where I'm going x equals n pi minus pi on 8 minus 0 0.513354. Right, and let's see what that gives me. Well, that gives me negative 0 0.90605. Now I look at each of those and I check are they in the domain. Yes, they are. All right, I've got to figure out if they're in here. Remember the formula that I'm using is this one up here. So I'm just changing values of n. And I'm looking at how close I'm getting to my boundaries. So let's now do n equals negative 1 we get x equals negative 1 pi minus pi on 8 plus the painful number. And I chuck it into my calculator and I get negative 3.02093. Now that's getting very, very close to negative pi, so that's going to be the bottom one at that end. And then I'm going to check the other one, negative 1. So we've got 2 for each n for cosine, so x equals negative pi minus pi on 8 
minus 0.513354. And when I worked that out, um, I can't remember what I got, but it was less than negative 3.14, so it's too low. So this one here is in. Now let's go up and do n equals 1. It's the same thing. x is equal to 1 pi. Always take away pi on 8, plus the number. Right, and when I work that out, you can put that in your calculator and you get a number that's bigger than 3.14, so it's too high. It's a little bit like Goldilocks and the three bears. Okay, so that one's not in, that one's not in. Now let's look at the other one for n equals 1. x is equal to pi minus pi on 8 minus 0.513354. And that equals 2.2355. And so that one will be in. Now I'm just going to check. Do I need to check n equals 2? Well, I kind of should in case something weird's going on. I'm just going to check the end one there. So it's 2 pi minus pi on 8 minus 0.513354. And that one's too big. So we reject. The, the other thing that really helps me here is that I know from looking at the function... Where's the function gone? It's disappeared. If we look at the period of the function, we know that it's pi. And we started with all of this. But if I know that the period of the function is pi, that means that I'm given this range here, which is 2 pi wide. So there are going to be usually two solutions within each period. Right? I'll just try and make this a bit clearer down here. Um, so this is the graph of cos of 2x, and one period here is not 2 pi, but it's pi. So I can see that if I put in, let's put in a different colored line here, I'm trying to find, oh, that was a cool line. Hang on, where's it gone? Oh, no, where's my cosine function gone? There we go. Right, so I'm looking for how many solutions I'm going to get, and I'm usually going to get four, so one, two, three, four. So having a bit of an understanding of the period of the function helps you to have some intuition for what your answers are going to be. The other way to do it, of course, is that on your calculator, we already saw that there were four numbers. So you've just got to make sure that you get all four of them when you're doing your calculations. So just checking back here one last time before I run out of time. Here's the first one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. But even by my standards, that's a really big mess. So what we're going to do at the end is we're going to write them nicely in a set. And we're going to say x is equal to, we do some nice curly brackets and we're going to put them in order. So negative 3.0209, negative 0 0.9061, 0 0.12065, and then the last one is 2.2355. So there you go. Those are the values that make John's equation true. So it's not always true, it's sometimes true. Now I'm just scrolling back up to give you some clues on how to try the next one, which I'm going to do in a separate video tomorrow night because it's getting a bit too late. This is it here. Now this looks bad, but there are a couple of things we can do. If we want to figure out when it's true, it's not always going to be true. This is a wave function here, but this is a squared wave function here. And we can look at the values of this, and this is going to go between 0 and 1, because it's cosine squared. So this can neg never be negative, whereas this one can go as low as negative 1. To solve this, I need to collect everything up onto one side and then factorize and then do my general solutions. So I'll look at that one tomorrow night, um, have a go at it first, and remember that the solutions um, written up ones from Ms. Shang we've posted on Google Classroom. Thanks very much for watching.